and welcome to the Ross Clown Podcast. I'm your host, Carl Ross Sr., and this podcast was created to motivate and to inspire in hopes that you will become a better you. On this special edition of the Ross Cloud Podcast, we have our very special guest. We have the one and only author, Joseph Wade. A love letter to the Nubian Queens. A look into the heart of a black man. Right on. And we're going to start in just a second. Joseph Wade, what's happening, brother? Good to see you, sir. Doing hey, well. Good Doing to well. see you, man. First of all, man, I want to say thank you again, man, for coming on the platform and allowing me to interview you on today to take the folks on a journey. You know, this platform is uh, created to motivate, to inspire, yes, sir. in hopes that somebody can hear something today that can help them just, just give them a little piece of hope, man, mm-hmm. that God can lead them on the same journey. Uh, everybody's journey is different, but we know that God has a purpose and a plan for everybody's life. And thank you for coming on the platform, brother. Thank you. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Absolutely. So, look, man, we ain't going to let the people, uh, we're we going to go ahead and get right on into it. We ain't going to hold them up no longer. Let's, let's uh, go ahead and get into it. Before we actually get into the book, let's um, talk about your journey, your life's journey, before getting into how the book came about. Let's talk about right. Joseph Wade. Okay. <clears throat> Right here in Winston Salem, uh, born and raised, um, Mount Tabor High School. Shout out to the Spartans. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> man. Real talk. Uh, Mom was an educator. Mm. She didn't go to uh, school. When I say educator, she taught Sunday school. Correct. She taught um, me and my siblings everything. I mean, she taught us how to read, write. Um, she taught us about God. And that was that was my basis. Yeah, uh, I remember just quick interlude. <laughs> she taught me how to say the word airplane when I was about four or five years old, <laughs> and I had a little comic in me. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said airplane, and I said airplane, and she said <laughs> that's good airplane. Yeah. So then I said aeroplane, <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me. She was like, "No, son." <laughs> Airplane. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Airplane. <laughs> so she taught me, man, to always to speak well, you know, to enunciate Absolutely. your words. Don't don't have a lazy tongue. That, yeah. that, that should irritate her. Yeah. But, um, you know, man, writing has always been a part of that release, I should yeah. say. Yeah. Um, it's not like I journaled a lot, but it was an outlet for me. Really? It was an outlet in the sense that um, you always have to have something that keeps you alive so to speak yeah it keeps you from dragging your mental feet I mean, uh, when i, I say like that, that. Yeah. is you always have to have an active mind and to have an active mind you know you got to let some of that stuff out mm. so writing was that way for me to release the inner portion of me um i got a chance on facebook to reconnect with one of the coaches that was really vital in my life over at mount Tabor high school yeah a guy by the name of fred willett mm-hmm. um Ninth grade coming over. Uh, we had a rough year, ninth grade at um, Haynes. Then we got to Mount Tabor in the 10th grade. And, man, I was taking everything serious. You know, I was sure. just, just serious, man. Yeah. And uh, Clara Pella, who had that thing, that slogan for Wendy's. What a going, name. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the beef? Yeah. <laughs> so, man, he was like, well, you just need to calm down. You know, just relax. Just, yeah. just be you. Yeah. So he messed around and gave me one of them hats and said, where's the beef on it? Oh. So, you know, at first I was like, I don't know. But anyway, as things went on that, that year, yeah. uh, football and, and him talking to me, just just understanding it, you know, I was all right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. all right. So my personality started to come out then. Sure. And uh, 
that just translated over to me be, being comfortable with who I was. Absolutely. At that time in high school. And, and you was playing football at this time, correct? Yeah, yeah. All I was of playing this football is right there. Football, your journey and everything. Got gotcha. you. Football's first love. Got gotcha. you. <clears throat> um, dad had me playing baseball. Yeah, I remember. When I was younger. Yeah, oh, my um, God. <laughs> Dude, I was playing over the, this little, little field, man, and I got hit by a pitch. That man's hurt. So then uh, <laughs> I say, oh, ended my God. the career. Did it end the career? Or? The next one did. <laughs> I got hit again. I wanted to run up to that base mound so bad. Oh, my God. So I said, Dad, look, I'm going to try football. At least I can hit them people back. That's right. So, you know, football <laughs> took over from there, man. Yeah, so yeah. that was my first love. Matter of fact, you know, I'm still, I, I got a chance to coach football starting when I was 18 when I first graduated from high school. Uh, my nephew, Alfred Shaw, yeah, he uh, wanted me to take him to practice. <laughs> and he said, Joe, man, the coach said he ain't got no help. How about you come out here and helping us, man? Yeah. I said, dude, okay. Yeah. So I go out there, and that He's was the still beginning. Still like of, that today, too. That was the beginning of it, man. <laughs> yeah, and I've been doing it now for thirty-seven seasons, bro. So gotcha. gotcha. That's my thing, man. Love it. Yeah, you you uh, coached uh, semi-pro too, am I right? Yes. Yes. How, what was that like for you? Was that different Ooh, than high school? Much so, because okay. semi-pro you're dealing with adults, mm. um, and they have their own personalities, of course. And needless to say, they uh, have some of the vices that are uh, abundant in the society. Uh, so, you know, you. at halftime, you might have a little smoke cloud. I understand. A little, a little something on the breath. So semi-pro football is something special. But I, right. I, it really did enhance my coaching overall because it allowed me to be still a good communicator. Sure. Um, you have to be able to meet people where they are if you want to take them somewhere. That's right. You never assume that you know more or that you're better than somebody else. Dude, we all in this together. Talk about it. It ain't nothing but life. That's all it you is. You know, my experience may not be your experience, but mm-hmm. my experience may be able to help yours yes. or enhance your experience. Yes. So that's what I try to do with some of my pro football. You know, it's adults, um, 18 to I think the oldest guy I ever coached is like 40, oh. 45, are something like still, that. you still chasing that dream, huh? Dude, yeah. And matter of fact, <laughs> he messed around and got hurt. Ooh. When I say hurt, he couldn't go to his regular job. Oh, wow. So, um, but he he loved game. He loved the game. He loved the game. So, you know, you always teach. You always, you're always teaching. That's what coaching is, is teaching. Sure. Um, with also me working in the school system as a TA, um, it allowed me to enhance the learning aspect for guys. Mm. So, you know, it, it plus it made me a better teacher. Sure. In the did, did you too, find so. yourself – uh, even in the midst of teaching and coaching, did you still um, uh, do some writing? Did you go back home and do some writing still in your private time? Yes. As a matter wow. of fact, during the time of my divorce, which we we, we touch a little bit in the book. Sure. But uh, <laughs> during that time, man, I was working at Andrews High School, which is in High Point. Yeah. So I get up, drive to Andrews. Yeah. In the afternoon, I come drive back to Forsyth Country Day because that's where I was coaching football. Sure. Coach Varsity and JV there. Mm-hmm. Then after that, three days a week, I drive back to High Point to coach the semi-pro team. Oh, wow. So, dude, football was, was what kept me sane. Sure. Riding was an outlet, but football kept me sane because I kept doing stuff. I just had to stay active. Sure. Because, you know, man, whenever your heart's broken – Shoot, bruh. <laughs> when your heart is broken, when a man's heart is broken, a lot of people like to say that men don't show emotion. Yeah, we don't mm. show emotion. Right. A, lot of, a lot of people like to say we don't have as much capacity to love, yeah. which is so false. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I loved. And when well, let me ask you this. Broken, uh, hold ahead, hold yeah. on. Before, before we get into that, mm-hmm. uh, did you write poetry too as well? Do did you dabble a little bit in poetry, or you didn't? Or I did for a minute. Friend did, of mine, okay. friend of mine was a rapper. Oh wow! And, okay. uh, you know, man, I was inspired by him listening to his lyrics. Sure. You know, Public Enemy, uh, KRS One. Oh yeah, all them cats. Great poets of our time, even though they're considered rap artists, they're they're really street poets. Exactly, yeah. and that that was the appeal of Tupac. Sure, that's you right. Know. Yeah. You yeah. know, because he some of the stuff that he oh, did was he just was a, pure poetry. Man, talk about it. So you know, I ended up. Um, and Biggie was a great storyteller. Definitely. Yeah, great storyteller. Yeah, great storyteller. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Now, I sorry. never did have the capacity to actually rap. I got but, you. 
<laughs> when it comes to the lyrics, it's just oh, words. Yes, it's and, all you know, it combining is. words with feeling. That's all writing is. You Correct. combine the words and tr- you try to to show the feeling that's behind the words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I did some poetry. Okay. Um, and so was, I don't. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I'll go. We can go back to that place yeah, no where you talking about you the brokenness. You were hurt. Mm-hmm. You were hurt as a man, and um, talking about men and our feelings and our emotions. We can go back there now. I, I just sure. wanted to get that out though, because for some reason I kept saying. I thought Joe wrote some uh, poetry too, or dabbled in it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's something. That's that's a whole different lane too. I'm figuring that out when it comes to writing, or is it the same? Actually, man, it's the same. Is it okay? You know, I was never that guy that was always trying to make the words rhyme. That's why rapping really, really wasn't my forte. Gotcha. Um, I just put the words on the paper and to express what was on the inside. Okay. Um, then, of course. Somewhere along the way, when I was about 22, 24 years old, I accepted God as my Savior. Mm. Show sure enough. I, of course, sure I did enough. when I was 12. <laughs> but, you know, dude, anyway. I understand. We, we got to live through teenage years yes. and the first, the adolescent years. I mean, Absolutely. Oh, my God. Yes, did we live? Yes. But anyway, um, <laughs> God will save us all from oh, something. Oh, man. Yes, he will, man. So anyway, man, you know, I was writing, but I was writing like sermons. Because mom did that. I didn't even realize that's what it was until later on in life. She was writing sermons. Mm. She was part of this group in, in church called the Messengers. Mm. And that's what it was. Every once in a while, they had a message to put out there. Right. And But mom was a writer. She was always writing. So that love of writing is what she, she gave to me in addition to um, making sure that you spoke well. You know, we had to do our recitations. Yeah, absolutely. Got to stand up in front of the church. Yes, sir. Uh, do your little part. Make sure you know your part. Oh, my God. How many whoopers did I get for that? But anyway. Uh, <laughs> Man, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, writing was always there. And it was poetry, but it's not necessarily rhyming poetry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wasn't the greatest looking guy, um, but I knew how to like I said, tap into my emotion in writing. Absolutely. So because of that, I, I dabbled in, in writing some love letters to, uh, to, to indiscriminate women, we'll say. I understand. Uh, I understand. You know, try to catch, we all got a pass. Yeah. You yeah. know, to get, to get that appeal. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Um, and then because of that, that's, that, that was the basis for where the book really came from. So was this, was this um, from different relationships or was it just, like a blur, like different different times that really stood out the most to you in these letters that you wrote. Well, the, actually, it, it comes from different times. Okay. Um, the initial portion of the book, uh, which you know we'll get to, um, is about when I was married. Uh, I felt that I was, you know, I I had arrived, man, twenty two yeah. years old, getting married. I thought I found my queen. Yeah. Um, so you know that was the first portion of my writing of the book. Then from there, um, we ended up, like I said, just over the, to- over the course of time after that, we ended up writing down some things that we had written to other young ladies, um, in, in search of love again. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's the way it really, uh, evolved. You know I love it. I love it. It evolved and- from just being one, just wanting to have a platform to say, Hey, look, you know, this is where I am. I got you. And, and, and so again, to our audience that's listening, this this is a book. This is the author uh, Joseph Wade the uh, Third, and and the title of the book is a love letter to Nubian queens, and it's a look into the heart of a black man. I I gotta ask you before we go on any further. Yeah. Um, how, how did you come up with the title? <laughs> and I, I love it, though, because it it speaks volumes. You, you kind of spoke on it a, a few minutes ago when you were saying, I don't know why um, people think that we're not loving or men can't love. We don't have the compass, capacity yeah. to even uh, convey love at right. all from the heart. Right. So the look into the heart of a black man, I that right there is cold to me, man. I'm telling you, I yeah. I love that part because in our community, sometimes it's just so much testosterone. Oh, you you sure. better not cry. Man, you better hold your head up. 
Exactly. Uh, everything will be all right. We exactly. we we are, we're we're taught to be tough. Mm-hmm. We're told from our mothers if if you if you grew up in a single home, you the man of the house. I need you to be the man of the house. Right. So I, can you talk a little bit about that part of the book, a look into the heart of a black man, and kind of from your perception, kind of just explain to us the title. Gotcha. The, the title of the book. Well, um, I know I went around the world. Bro. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. A love letter to Nubian Queens was actually given to me by the first editor of the book. Uh, she actually came up with that particular title. Uh, I wanted it to be thought, images, love. Mm. Those three words. Because it all starts with a thought. Absolutely. Uh, the emotion that we have on the inside the zeal or the zest for life or the pains of life. It all starts with the thought. Yeah. Uh, if, you know, if I say hard, first thing that might come to mind is a rock, something solid. Yeah. Something you could depend on. Mm. But given looking at some, the next view of that, the thought might be cold, inconsistent, mm. abrasive, Mm. You catch what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I was like thoughts, images, love. But this was a title that I guess it was just an opening to get into the hearts of young ladies to let them see that they were queens. Uh-huh. None of the writing in here is derogatory to any woman. When I say that, I have no somebody might take it that way, yeah. but I have never, ever used the B word. To reflect my emotions. And let me woman. give you a hand clap for that, brother, okay? <laughs> I, I, we need a lot of that. We need more of that in our society on today. And I must take the time and just give you a hand clap for that because we need more of this in our society. Okay, right. my brother, go right. ahead on. Man, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. So I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, yes. Sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, man. You know, whenever you respect your mom, you respect your sisters, yeah. you respect the young, the women in your life. Um, that was p- what I was raised with. Sure. Then, of course, as we live a little bit, you see that every woman doesn't respect herself like that. Yes. So something that I thought of or it was reinforced in my church life was even though. A woman may not know who she is or respect herself. Yeah. You always respect her. Yeah. yeah. You respect her as a mother. You respect her as a sister. Yeah. You respect her as a grandmother. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that respect is where this book really came from. And a look into the heart of a black man. Well, my pen name or my nom de plume <laughs> is uh, Hugh it. Man Black. Hugh Man Black. Okay. H-U-G-H-M-A-N-N. B L A C K. Human black. Human. First of all, in this society of America, a lot of times whenever people see a black man, oh yeah, it either makes them run, they get fearful, or they really just don't know how to approach us. We are an enigma. Mm. What does that mean? Good word. What, yeah. Who are we? Yeah, what good word. is that? Yeah. We're not. We become a, a thing a rather thing. than a person. Mm. So human is just my swing, my way of saying. I'm a human being. That's all. I'm a human being. That's right. Now, what God gave me, I'm a human being that just happens to be black. Mm. So my perspective or the way I see things yeah. is through the lens of a black man. That's true. Having lived in America all my life, all I can see is how America has perceived me. Understood. So being a black man who is six foot two, uh, <laughs> 300 plus pounds. <laughs> That can be intimidating to some folks. Sure. And my wife, she'll tell me from time to time, you know you intimidate people. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, look, I'm just being me. Yeah. The problem is with them. If yeah. they're intimidated just by me yeah. and I ain't done nothing but smile and speak to you, That's all. then you have the problem. They have the problem, not me. Yeah. So it's all about the perception, man. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to make sure with my name being Human Black, my pen name, and being having a look into the heart of a black man, understand we may not smile all the time. True. But that don't mean we ready to slap you. No, no. You know, we may not laugh and joke all the time, but that doesn't mean that we don't have a heart full of humor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if I do smile in a certain situation, how do you know my heart ain't broke while Mm. I'm smiling at you? Mm. 
How do you know that my smile isn't masking the pain that I've had to live through just by being a black man today? Mm. Mm. How many times have we stepped out of the door, going to a job that we just have because we needed to have a job? (laughs) Right. Not that they really value us, but we just needed to have a job. You need to have a job. And then next thing you know, the people that you face are like, what's wrong with you? Why you ain't smiling today? Yeah, yeah. Well, man, I just don't feel a smile. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe my struggle yesterday I let come up today. Yeah. So let's just let me stay peaceful. Yes. So take this smile and keep keep it pushing. Yeah, go ahead you know and take that smile. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that's why I was like, we have to keep ourselves wrapped up. Yeah. And I'm, talk, I'm, not, I'm talking non-spiritually. I'm just talking about carnal man i I got you we Mm -hmm. have to take care of us yes we do in our own minds so to speak yes you know we gotta we gotta keep that image we gotta be strong yeah yeah so every once in a while whenever i would write it's a look into a heart you ain't gonna see everything in my heart because only god can read the heart yes but i'll give you a glimpse and so it's just a look you know it's just a look i love that and i love your perception on it i love the way you took us on a journey with that to yeah. really get a full understanding of the title. Mm-hmm. And I must say, you guys can't see it right now, but you can you can go on uh it's good. They can they can purchase Amazon, this on Amazon, uh, books right? A million, anywhere books are, are sold. Okay, I love that. And again, the title of the book is A Love Letter to Nubian Queens, A Look into the Heart of a Black Man. And it's by Joseph Wade the third. And I love it. I also mm. want to talk to you about the cover. Right. The, the cover is so inviting. Uh, I love the, the colors that have been chosen. I love yeah. the purple. I love the blue. Mm-hmm. And I love the island that you see the lady sitting on. Uh, it looks like she could be drinking a pina colada or something <laughs> refreshing. Right, that, right. that she's in like a space of uh, tranquility, uh, exactly. peace, um, a piece of heaven here on earth, if you would. But the purple to me just represents royalty, a queen. Exactly. So uh, I love the colors, man, exactly. of this. Uh, can, can you talk about the color, the color scheme that you chose for the book? If Maybe I touched on it a little bit, but you can go a little further. But oh, I love man, the colors of the book. Right. You're absolutely right. Okay. See, it, it shows a woman that's on the beach. Um, I When the first time I went to Myrtle Beach, I think I was about 22. Yeah. Yeah, about 22 years old. First time I've ever gone to the beach. So I go to the beach. And I'm looking at the water rush up on the shore. Yeah. And it knows where to stop. Yeah. That blew my mind. That all of this water, as far as I could see, knew where to stop. Yeah. I mean, only God could do that. Absolutely. But anyway. Yeah, I got one, you. Yes, yes, <laughs> it sir. Was, it, it was such, it brought me to tears, man. Yeah. The first time I saw the ocean, standing on the seashore at Myrtle Beach, man, it brought me to tears. Yeah. So what happens is, the reason why we chose this background or the, the cover for the book, to me, that's the most tranquil place. Yes. Right there, listening to the waves crash on the sea, on the, on the shore. There's a sun setting in the background saying, okay, now it's time to relax, to unwind. Purple is the dominant color because, yes, we are talking to royalty. Yeah. I believe that black women are absolutely gorgeous. In all of their hues of brown and yellow and black. I mean, it's just beautiful to me. Yeah. So they're royal. The color of the water, it has, I think there's like three different colors. Yes, There's a is. light blue, there's a, yeah. a in between, and then there's a darker blue. Yeah. Just as the waves roll on the, on these, on the shore, Yeah. the difference of emotion is, mm. is shown in the colors. So, you know, that's what we try to... Uh, you did. We tried uh, to capture because the, the woman is also wearing a red hat. Yes, she is. A red sun hat. Yeah. Well, she's wearing the red sun hat and the hair is, is hanging down because red is that vibrancy. Yeah. That no matter what you see in that whatever hue of brown the woman is in, there's still a vibrancy if she's the one that catches your eye. I love it. I love it. You know what else I got from it? Yeah. Um, The title. Mm-hmm. So it's love letters to the Nubian queen. Yeah. So what what caught me from an artistic standpoint, mm-hmm. you're saying a lot on this cover. But the one thing I, I can say for me, from my perspective, just from somebody who's being uh, uh, somebody who's purchased the book, 
Yeah. Uh, and and by the way, it's, it's man, I really appreciate that. Right uh, yeah, right man, a couple. I've, I've read a few. I've, I've got to finish it, but I've read a few of them, and and I, I'm not gonna give away anything. I'll let you read a, maybe like one page or two pages. They gotta buy the book. Right on. Right on. <laughs> but what I got from this whole covering was, first of all, it's a love letter to a Nubian queen, a look into the heart of a black man. Right. But when you look at this beautiful scenery on the front cover of this, mm-hmm. it, the sketch, this drawing on the front, it, to me, is saying she can find comfort in her black man, protection. Yes. Uh, uh, a sense of uh, you on vacation, baby. Right. I got you. Right. Relax. Exactly. It's comforting. Yeah. I see her like... It, when you guys get this book, you'll see exactly what, what we're talking about. But she's comfortable. Mm-hmm. She's at peace. And it's because she knows that there's a black man that loves her. Well, even in the queen. midst of that but peace. But maybe I went too far. No, 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 no. No, really. Yeah, yeah. Even in the midst of that peace and yeah. the tranquility, notice she's on the beach alone. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. So what happens is the love letter or the, there's a, um, a letter that's on the beach yeah. there in front of her. She is still in a search mode. Mm. In other words, where is my king? Mm. You know what I'm saying? She's a queen, but I'm not I'm not trying to step on any toes and I know it's a, I, a politically I, correct society. I, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you all but right. The way God intended it to be, king, queen, yeah. man, woman. Sure. Mm-hmm. So she's being alone, but she still needs to that that comfort, yes. that tranquility yes. of knowing that there is somebody out there who has me as the apple of their eye. I love you it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, it's beautiful, man. It really is. Um, as we're talking about it, and, you know, this is our second interview, but as we go deeper into it, the deeper we go into the conversation, right, it right. really kind of gives a broad explanation of the purpose of this book. I mean, the cover... And just looking at the cover, if if you're a person that uh, understands and can comprehend exactly what the art is saying, yeah, then you, it it'll, it'll give you the premise of the book, right? Pretty much just from looking at the cover of it, exactly. But you do need to read it, right? Um, how hard was it before before? Because I want you to read an excerpt of the of the book. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to read it all. Because listen, folks, we want you guys to purchase the book. <laughs> it is on Amazon. It is the love letter to a Nubian queen, right. a look into the heart of a black man. And we have our guest on today, Mr. Joseph C. Wade the Third. But I just think that this is just an amazing book. And I'm uh, first of all, brother, I want to say I'm proud of you, man, for. Uh, getting this done, but how hard was it? Was it difficult to get this done? I'm gonna be honest with you. It took me about this. This book actually compact comp- encompasses approximately twenty years of writing. Wow. Um, so you, the, this is over a twenty year period of different. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's about twenty years that's here on this book. I love it. Um, and I say that because. That was something that I wrote my first wife that she still hung on to, which is um, I can't remember the title of it. Yeah. But I love the was, transparency, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that. That's that's so needed in our society today because everybody thinks that because they've had failures that they can't succeed. Dude. And, and you know, that's not true. In the midst true. of that failure. You really believe you can't succeed. <laughs> yeah. Real talk. I, yeah. Um, absolutely. I mean, because, you know, whenever you feel that you have attained or you have reached the zenith of where you want to be with Come relationships. On, Come on. And then all of a sudden that thing is ripped away from you. Dude, if you really it. love, it's hurt. It hurt, man. I mean, it's just pure hurt. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. man, when it comes to transparency, dude. Yeah. Whenever we love, like I said, whenever a black man really loves something or a man really loves someone, yeah. listen, he loves that. Yeah. There's nothing that he won't do for that woman. There's nothing that will keep him from being all that he can be yeah. to affect that woman's heart. So, man, I know. know. I, I, I know. I've got a I question I want to ask you. Yeah, yeah. How do you think, and I know. You may be able to answer it, but just from a perspective, mm-hmm. from your perspective, 
Yeah. How do you think uh, we as black men, mm-hmm. how do we transfer that same love and energy over to our children, man? Because, uh, you know, um, even even if you don't have kids, yeah. how do how do us as black men transfer that same type of love and energy and zeal mm-hmm. for our children, even in the midst of us? having kids by a Nubian queen, yeah. but we still may be at odds with each other and yeah. it's still not even together, but right. the children have to be at the forefront, but we can't find a way to navigate through the hurt and the pain that's been caused from the past relationship yes. so that we can love the child yeah. the same way in your opinion before we get into it because sure. that sparked me the sparked a yeah, question yeah, for yeah, me yeah. how do you think us as black men mm-hmm. are able to navigate how can we navigate through that and still get that same zeal and love for our children how do we get that right i think the biggest thing is whenever we look at the offspring that's what that's what that's the word I like to say other than just children mm-hmm. because they're offspring they sprang out of the love that you had or the passion you had sure. for an individual. Sure. So they always remind you of that individual. Mm-hmm. So now we say, how do I love this child? How do I convey that love to that child? Even though they may resemble the one that hurt me. Yeah. They may have some of the actions or uh, characteristics of the one that hurt me. Sure. By understanding they still have your characteristics that child looks like you also. Yes. It took two to make that one. Yes, it did. Or those children that followed along, that yeah. offspring. Yeah. But what I'm saying is we have to love us. Whenever you can look in the mirror and love you, you can love what came from you. That's right. If you can't find love for you when you look in the mirror, that child, that next woman, that next relationship is doomed to fail. I love it. Because you don't have the capacity at that moment to say, that's, that's part of me right there. Yeah. That's part. That's, that's my child. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the one that, that came from me. Yes. That's my offspring. Yes. They sprang from yes. me. Yes. So once we get to a point where we can love us, then we can love someone else. I love it. If you can't love you, then loving somebody else is unrealistic. It's unrealistic. So in in answering your question, yeah. you have to understand that that's part of you. That part of you is part of that came out of love, we hope. Maybe <laughs> it was just passion. Yeah. But that passion, that was the offspring of it. So I got to do what I got to do to love that portion of me that I see in that child. I love it. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. you always meet, I don't care who it is, whether it's your own child whether it's somebody who just you meet on the street, if you love somebody, there's a portion where you got to meet them where they are. Yeah. 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 You daddy. <laughs> yes. You are father. Yeah. Yeah. But allow me to get to know this child, this individual yeah. who looks like me, what? who is part of me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we got to love us to love that child. I love it. Man. I think that's the way we got to do that, man. I love it. You just have to understand that, yes, you may have made some mistakes, but doggone it, you all you got. Yeah, that's it, man. So I got to look in the mirror and love me. Yeah, in the literal sense. That's in so real true. talk. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. I, I wanted to ask you that question. That question just popped up in my head. I was like, man, we, we, love, we, we love our women, and then yeah. there are times where we're angry with them. Oh, for there sure. There are times where we've hurt them, where, yes. where we have perpetuated a situation or it's been perpetuate perpetuated on both sides <laughs> and then you got a mess of things and right that's why and, i just why think you say that it, it mm-hmm. goes on to say that even though we can love love ourselves we yeah. still the other word we got to do is we got to forgive ourselves mm-hmm. you know even though we made a mistake and sometimes we calculated that mistake yo a calculated mistake and just a happen to happen mistake <laughs> They yeah. still the same. Yeah, they still the same. So if you can That's love true. you through the mistake and forgive yourself through the mistake, yeah. then it helps you to move on and progress a little bit better. Oh, that's a great answer. That's a great answer to that. Yeah, but I, it's difficult. Just, though. Yo, man, it's, it's, difficult. it's, it's it, man. I'm gonna tell you I mean, something, you and know, it's true. When you when you've when you've hurt a woman, yes, it's yes. Man, when a woman is scorned by you, it's it's gonna take a lot of time for that healing 
for her to even trust you to be around your own kids. Oh, it's, for sure. It's a process. Definitely. It's, it's definitely a journey. I don't care how many times you say I'm sorry. It mm-hmm. is a journey to get back to that place. Right. Where you could at least be cordial enough and say, because it's always going to come up. It's yeah. just what you said a few minutes ago. Yeah. The child looks just like you. That's it. And every time they look at that child, they see you. Mm-hmm. And it sparks up either something good right. or it sparks up something bad. Right. And like you said, that forgiveness piece is so important yeah. for the love to even happen. Period. Oh, most definitely, man. man. I love it. You know, man. because, you know, I in the, the relationships I had in between marriages. Yeah. I think maybe half of the women that I had spoken to or had relationship with, they had kids by someone else. Understood. So as you coming into a relationship where a woman who's had kids by someone else, yeah. you still have to, you know, you ain't going to love the child right off top. Sure. Because it depends on how much you really love that woman. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's a good but point in the, too. But in that process, you can see, okay, this child has such and such and such and such quality that she got from mom yeah. who I'm interested in. Yeah. So I can see that. Oh, I don't recognize that. That must be from somebody else or <laughs> either, or either I haven't delved deep enough into this woman to figure out, Oh, that's there too. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So like, once again, it is perspective. Yeah. But it's also relationships take time, man. Relationships take time. Oh, it take time. You know, it that's why time, man. Um, it's work. It is. It's and then that's why we can't, we can't just be caught up with the the physicalness of, of, of love and, and get caught yeah. swept away in the passion. And one Dude. day, one day that's going to go away. For sure. I remember when I was weighing uh, 180. Yeah. Lean and mean. <laughs> uh, I ain't seen them days. <laughs> I ain't seen them days in a while, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel you, brother. Yeah, I, feel you. I ain't yeah. seen them days in a while, man. No so doubt. that stuff, that stuff pass away after yeah. a while, you know. That physical attraction. That physical attraction. It has to be deeper than that. It's got to be deeper than that, man. You know, I, I you know, that's just, I, I love this book. I, I love what you put together. The, the couple of pages that I've read thus far, I've got to get deeper into it. Mm. But um, if you would, would you read and a, a page right or, you know a page out of your book mm-hmm. to give the folks a kind of uh a peek into what this book is all about well on the very first page um just as an introduction yeah uh the very last paragraph says i come to you as a human being who is not perfect but striving to become better a leader by creed but a follower of him as in god and that's Hugh Man Black. So that, that's who I am as the author. That's that's the side of me that, that's actually pinning the book. Yeah. Because I'm not that guy who's just going to share my feelings or emotions just because. Yeah. Because I have to take care of me. That's right. You know, I got to take care hey, of me. That's I, right. You can't that's share right. everything with everybody. No, you cannot. You know, uh, no, the you Bible cannot. says I got to guard my heart. Yes, you do. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, you got to. I got to guard my heart. So which which uh, part are you reading right now? Uh, page 21, Love is Secure. Mm. It's the intro to where uh, we felt that love was, was already settled. You know, this right. was going to be the one forever. You know what oh, I'm saying? I like the beat scene, too. By right, the way. right. <laughs> <laughs> love is Secure. I was 22 years old when I married the woman of color I thought was my lady to the end of time. She was the beauty that arrested my mind as no other had previously. The sun rose and set upon this graceful lady of color, whom I swore my love and devotion. She was to be my queen as I built my kingdom. This is my tribute to the ecstasy of love and all its glorious existence. Truly, love was the strength of this episode of my life. Hope for the longing soul to have love, lasting love. Oh, how I wanted love to be without end. And you know, that just, mm. that was the portion of the Woo. book when yeah. we were just trying, you know, we delved into love and, you know, I'm married and everything's cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh man. I so love that's where that. that came from. And that's love is secure. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh man. Right. Oh man. Right. on. Yeah. That was, I love uh, that man. You know, that was, like I said, 22 and that marriage lasted for 15 years. Yeah. And then 
like I said, ebbs and flows. I, when I look back on it, I'm like, man, I was in love. I really was. Yeah. But at 22, man, that's a little young. That's a little yeah. young. Yeah, it is. Simply because I didn't know who I was going to become, nor did I know who she was going to become. So how is it we're going to make this thing last over the years? Yeah. Excuse me. When all we see right now is 22 and in love. Yes, sir. L- I've been there. Oh, V, E, <laughs> love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yes, sir. Yeah, so. <clears throat> yes, sir. Listen, I hope you guys have heard. Um, of course, you guys have heard it as you as you continue to listen. This is just an an awesome book. Again, this is a love letter uh, to Nubian Queens, a look into the heart of a black man. Yes, and sir. it is just absolutely amazing. If if I could, can I read just one? Sure, man. Okay, sure. I'm going to read uh, something. It's on page 36. Mm-hmm. And the title of this one is Pillows. Right, right. How I long for the warmth of your beating heart next to mine in sensual embrace. How I hunger for the thrill of your passionate flavor in the midst of provocative kisses. How I crave the conversation of pillows was in the throes of posts. Orgasmic. Orgasmic bliss. (laughs) The desire of my sweet. (laughs) I love it. You know, because hey, listen, man, I'm going to tell you something. I'm I'm going to tell you what you're capturing here to me. What's up? What you're capturing here to me is the songs of Solomon. Hey. To God be the glory. You man, know what I'm, I'm telling you, man. Listen, this is whenever you I are love married, oh. man, there's nothing like what God ordained. Yeah, when you man. put together. So, man, sometimes you can't say everything to your homeboy. You be like, oh, look, no. I just love that woman. You no, know what I'm saying? You, you can't say So, that. only thing that could talk in that one was the pillars. Yes, sir. What in the world are these no. pillars? What If they could talk, what Boy, would they say? You know what I'm saying? See something going on up in there. Yes, sir. <laughs> and it's legal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, I bro. love yeah, it, man. Yeah. So and listen, by the same token, go ahead. <clears throat> and by the same token, just to give you the um, the alternate view of the same heart. Mm. Um, on page fifty nine, I want this is one of my favorite analogies. Okay, uh, it's called Passion Assassin. So there was a time when love decided it was going to fade a little bit. Yeah, and love found other visual. And physical places it wanted to be. Yeah. You catch what I'm saying? Yeah. Passion assassin. From the grassy knoll in the midst of a gorgeous sunny day, the sniper's high-powered rifle rang out as the precious life of passion was snuffed out by the exposition of prevarication. Mm. As passion lay sleeping in the sweet arms of a lover's embrace under the silken sheets, the blade of truth from the covert ninja dispatched life from her unsuspecting being. I'm not going to read all of that, but that was one of my, I love that analogy because if you think back to when the president of the United States, Kennedy got shot. Yeah. There was supposed to be one sniper on the knoll. Mm. The rang, the shot rang out and it snuffed out his life. Yes. That's what happened whenever Love decided to lie mm. with someone else. And when it was found out, bam, that heart, that shot right to the heart, passion is dead now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. whenever you there's a, a love that you have committed to and all of a sudden that commitment is cast aside, that's that rifle that rang out. Gotcha. That's that ninja's blade. It snuck up on you because yeah. you really wasn't expecting it. Yeah. That's what killed the passion. You know, that's what took us out. You know what I'm saying? That's what caused us to not have yes. the same security of love that we thought we had. Mm. So, like I said, you know, the heart, the, the heart of a black man was broken at that point. Yeah. Um. I'm not going to you know point fingers because when I think back about it, there were times that maybe I wasn't as attentive as I needed to be. Right on. Maybe there was times when I 
didn't give the right look in my eye whenever there was something that was worn that should have been, oh, wow, you look great in that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to say that it was all on the other person. Sure. I just know that that's what the end result was. Yeah. The death of that love. The death of that passionate, passionate love for that individual. Yeah. I, I, I love it, man. Um, this is this has just been an uh, awesome interview, man. And I'm again, man, I'm so grateful that you decided to mm, come on this platform, man, and speak about the book in more detail, man. And um, I, I'm as I as we talk about this book. Right. It also kind of puts it also will be kind of like a guide to help us to learn to be a little bit more romantic too. Definitely. To opening up the romantic side to right. us. Right. Instead of just come on, say, come on, let's go get something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean? Come on, let's go get something to eat. You hungry? Let's go get something to eat, right, girl. Right, right. You know, we, we're able to do something different. When you read this book, it, it kind of helps you kind of soften that a little bit and say, yeah. hey, baby, you know, I got a nice dinner for you. You know, roses, candlelight, you know. Exactly. It helps you open up, you know, open up that heart. Right. A little bit. You know, there's something that sometimes whenever I I think I wrote in one of the pieces where I say something to the effect, I could have just said hello this morning or I could have just said good morning. Mm -hmm. But why not make you feel as though you were the center of my morning? Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody sees the sun rise. Mm -hmm. But when that sun rises over your thighs. You know what I'm saying? After we've Have had mercy. that night. Yes, sir. Dude, that just puts a whole different perspective on it. Yes, sir. So, like I said, um, writing is just a conveyance of emotion. Mm-hmm. It's a conveyance of thoughts. I love it. Whenever those thoughts are conveyed in a way that the reader can grasp them, yeah. and then they have their own perspective and their own view, yeah. and the image that you've placed in it with just that one thought, yeah, maybe that can help them get through the day. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Because something that we as men sometimes forget, we make love from the very first word we speak Yeah. at the beginning of the day. Yeah. So by the time you come back together again, man, all you did was say, girl, you light up my life. <laughs> That's all you say. And next thing you know, man, you getting that kiss. Yes, sir. That says, oh, my God. You finna hit a home run. Right. <laughs> Crowd goes wild. Indeed. <laughs> so yeah, man. You know, yes, that's sir. that's all it was. And, and yes, that's sir. that's what this book tries to convey. Yeah. Um, the yeah. thoughts and the images that make a Nubian queen yeah. feel that she's cared for. Yes. And by the opening up the heart, you see that it starts at a high, goes down to a low. Yes. And then it comes back up again. When I finally listened to God and found my true wife. I love it, man. You know what I'm saying? Because at 22, man, we, the, oh, I, was, no, I was young. That was, that was the other head that was thinking. You better know it. I wasn't listening to my no, heart, uh-uh. to be honest with you. No, sir. When I look back on Not that. Not at all. But then when I finally listened to God and he said, look, I got something better for you. Oh, yeah. Dude. Then you finally get it. Oh, my God. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah so, you know. so true. I love it, man. It gives the, it gives the ebbs and flows of life, yeah. the ebbs and flows of, of love. And yeah. then we just try to make sure that you understand that yeah. it came from the heart of somebody who cares about black women in totality. I love it. If I could, everybody's been in an uproar over Will Smith. Yeah, go ahead. Talk about it. And I agree that he should not have gone on that stage. Mm-hmm. But... uh. When he did it, in his mind, I think he was protecting what was his. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think that's what where his heart was, his intention was. I also say something I heard Earthquake say, the comedian. He say, before he got on that stage, if his woman really loved him, she would have pulled him and said, babe, not right here. Don't, don't do it this way. Protected him from that. Yeah. Your helpmate. The backlash. You know what I'm saying? So it's so many layers to that. It is. It really is. So many layers. Yeah, and I I have I haven't really uh, talked about it on this platform. Uh, It's so many layers to 
to that uh, situation. I, I hated to see it happen. You yes. know, a show being produced by a black man. Yes. He's getting presented an Oscar. Yes. Denzel's in the front. Tyler Perry's in there. You know, heavy hitters are in there. Samuel. Samuel Jackson, right. who won his Oscar. For sure. You know, and... It, I mean, they did a story of, of Venus and Serena. That, right. You know, the story of their father. Yes. You know, so all of that just, you know, just in a split second. Exactly. Uh, he had a moment of insanity. For sure. And it now, was on display. Now, think about it. How close is love to insanity? Yeah, pretty close. It's darn close. No, it's pretty close. So what I'm saying is what some people might say is insanity <laughs> and opening up to a woman who you just might have met a month ago. True story. It could be love, but it's also could be insanity. It could be insanity. So you look at this book and uh, whenever you read it, understand that love was the essence of it yes. and respect. I want every woman who reads this book to feel better about themselves. I, I could care less what they think of me as an author. You know, of course, I wanted to buy the books and tell somebody else they <laughs> like the course, book. Of course, of course. What yeah. I'm saying is I just wanted to be that person to say, I got your back. I love it. You know what I'm saying? There's so many other men who have their back. Yes. Just accept that love. Mm -hmm. Accept that it comes from a place of, of purity, you know, of truth, yeah. so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Um. And that, that's, that's what I wanted to get out about the book. You well, know, I thank you for that. Wherever it finds you as the reader, uh, whether it finds you in the throes of love, in the, in the arms of heartbreak, or in the, the idea of searching for love, that you can find that there's somebody else who's been there, done that, got a T-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Hey, talk about it. Um, so that, that's, that's the essence of the book. Well, I and thank I you. And yes, you're very welcome, man. In closing, man, um, I like to tell I like for you to tell the folks again, how can they purchase the book and how can they follow you? What's your social media platforms? If you would uh, you take the time to go ahead and give that out in, uh, before we close. Sure. Um, I do have Human Black has his own <laughs> page on uh, on Facebook. You can reach me out. H-U-G-H-M-A-N-N. B L A C K, Human Black on Facebook. Uh, also, Joseph Wade, my true name, is also, I'm on Facebook also, and that's to promote the book. Um, I am happily married now to my queen. All right. Uh, so it's just about the book. That's there ain't it. much else there. It's just about the book. <laughs> but you can purchase it on Amazon, Books a Million, uh, anywhere that you, you find books. You can find my book also. All right. um, and then if you're local, right here in Winston-Salem, the um, place downtown. Oh, I can't think of it. Anyway, it's right there on Trade Street. Anyway, there, there's a few books there. And thank God the uh, Black Theater Festival is coming through. Ah. So I will have a booth or I'll be set up outside there somewhere selling the book. Right on, right on. Listen, guys, I hope something was said here on today on the Ross Cloud podcast again thank you to our author and our special guest Mr. Joseph Wade for coming and telling us about his book A Love Letter to the Nubian Queen A Look into the Heart of a Black Man Listen, come on to support this Ross Cloud podcast yes sir Real yes talk. sir so listen, this is the Ross Cloud Podcast. I'm You're your good. host, Chris Ross, <laughs> Carl Ross Sr., and I'm out. Peace. <laughs>